Walk on water like your house shy and tell her all you could buy. We gon' slide from the west side till we slide to the east. From the south to the north side, we gon' slide as the beast. All praise to the most high. Yeah, I was shy in the 12 tribes. Whatever you do, don't kill my vibe. And we gon' slide from the west side till we slide to the east. From the south to the north side. We gon' slide as a beast. All praise to the most high. Yeah, I was shy in the 12 tribes. Whatever you do, don't kill my vibe. Holy Ghost. If you ride with me, then put your hands up. If you rock with Simeon, put your hands up. If you rock with Levi, put your hands up. If you love the tribe of Judah, put your hands up. If you happy like Asher, put your hands up. If you down with this, a car, put your hands up. If you rock with Zebulon, put your hands up. If you rock with Naphtali, put your hands up. If you rock with Wick, yeah, put your hands up. If you tough like Benjamin, put your hands up. If you real like Ephraim, put your hands up. If you love some Manasseh, put your hands up. If you rep the most high, put your hands in the sky. And keep them up like you praying to the most high. If you rep the southern kingdom, man, you say that you a Jew. Tell the whole nation, raise up the rule. We gon' slide from the west side till we slide to the east. From the south to the north side. We gon' slide at the feast. Slide All praise to the most high. Yeah, I was shy in the 12 tribes. Whatever you do, don't kill my vibe. Holy Ghost.
y'all know when we say true nation, y'all say true nation. Y'all know what's up. I said, 
Man, I was trying to be sincere. Yeah. I never wanted this. Look. Where there's contention, someone got pride. I try my best not to be that guy. I wanted family, not a franchise. You could blame it all on me. I've been praying to the most high. Let me see, don't let me be blind. I guess I'll be the bad guy. Blame it all on me. I ain't try to hurt nobody. I didn't mean to hurt the body. I was trying to do the right thing. Maybe I'm wrong, blame it all on me. I was trying to be a friend. I was hoping we would win. Swore I never was pretending. What a shame, blame it all on me. It hurt when I saw that you believed that I was nothing but the bad guy. Was worse, I was trying to be sincere. I never wanted to be that guy. I play it back in my head. All the things that I said was I in my feelings. Then I looked to the words. All the law was being slack. Had to be a witness. I see that you offended. Maybe we can talk a bit I wish you would believe me But so many of you are convinced I feel I'm being crucified And I ain't by myself I'm a true believer of the way Now I know how you how I feel When there's contention, someone got pride I try my best not to be that guy I wanted family, not a franchise You could blame it all on me I've been praying to the most high Let me see, don't let me be blind I guess I'll be the bad guy Blame it all on me I'm mad how you left, but I gotta keep it real Yet her low key You say I wanted power, but you never took the time Just to talk to me I don't hold no ill will towards none of y'all They used to leave should repent if the people think I'm wrong, blame it all on me. Where there's contention, someone got pride. I try my best not to be that guy. I wanted family, not a franchise. You could blame it all on me. I've been praying to the most high. Let me see, don't let me be blind. I guess I'll be the bad guy. Blame it all on me. If I did anything to you, blame it all on me. I apologize. Blame it all on me. If I offended you in any kind of way, without a righteous cause, blame it all on me. Promise I didn't mean to. I apologize. Hope you can forgive me. Desire one Ariala. All praises to the Father. You on or you gone? I Salute to the throne. Try.
make sure it's right, girl. On the beach, on the moon, listening to our favorite tune. Wine for you, he need for me. Conversations getting deep. You can move righteously if you put it to your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I've been listening, and it's got me on my grind. Uh, but can you be the one I need? Cause what I want, I really need right now. Make it work it out. Shabby, you may be seated. Boy, it feel good to be here on the Shabbat. Man. And all praise be to the Most High. All praises. Good to see each and every one of y'all. Beautiful, beautiful. Always want to acknowledge, <coughs> excuse me, acknowledge our visitors. Where the visitors at? <laughs> All praise be to the most high. Some of you guys have been here a number of times. Some of you guys are even on the verge of becoming members. All praise be to the most high. All praises. All praises. Some of you guys are here for the very, very first time, so I hope most high willing you guys enjoy yourself. Um, definitely get something from this word. And, uh, man, as always, man, all praise be to the Most High just for allowing us to see another Sabbath, another day of rest. And, you know, of course, I got all the OGs in the house. <laughs> so all praise be to the Most High. Same thing to everybody out there that's watching, tuning in. All praise be to the Most High. Uh, let's get into it. The title of today's lesson, TikTok. Who's familiar with TikTok? <laughs> hey, tick tock. <laughs> so it's not that the whole lesson is looking. Some of y'all was like, oh, they about to get on. I'll be all on tick tock. How many of y'all you really be on tick tock? Keep it real. All right. So I'm not about to tell you that tick tock is the devil. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. But it's a play on words, TikTok. What does TikTok mean way before we had, you know, the TikTok? TikTok is what? The clock is ticking. Time is rolling, right? So TikTok, distracted as time draws nigh. Distractions, what are we distracted by? TikTok is one of those things that can be very distracting, Right? Anything that's utilized in moderation, it's not that it's a sin to be on TikTok. But when it gets to a situation where all you do is think about TikTok, you on TikTok 24-7, now we might have somewhat of an issue. All right? And the reason for that is, like I said, because we as a people, what we don't understand is we are distracted. 
It's, it's a method that our enemies have used since way back. It's commonly known, and you could actually go and do your research, go and read it for yourself, that especially like in Rome, they strategically began to create situations. And it even talks about it in the scripture during the time of the Greeks where they created the Olympics. That became a distraction. But it wasn't just a distraction, but it was a major distraction for our people, right? We were the source of entertainment, right? To this very day, who's the source of entertainment? Still us. You really won't pay as much to see a lot of these other nations, but you'll, you'll pay to see Israelites. You'll pay to see so-called black and brown people. You will pay to see us, but you ain't really paying for anybody else. So if they right. had the Arab Olympic Games, you wouldn't go? Ah, nah. I, don't th I think I'll pass. <laughs> but us, yeah, we entertain. We're great. We do great things that a lot of other people or a lot of other nations look at and wonder how, you know, we're able to do some of the amazing things that we do, right? Black and brown people, indigenous people. So with all of that being said, think about this. During the time of Rome, um, that is the reason why they would build the Colosseums and they began to have the various different games and the gladiators and so on and so forth because it was a distraction for things that they were doing behind the scenes, all right? Believe it or not, this government does the exact same thing still, even more so today. They will have something going on, everybody's into it, it's buzzing, everybody's talking about it, and it's nothing more than a distraction. Now it's a lot easier to distract our people. Back then it was a little bit more difficult. Now it's easy because everybody hold up your phone. Who has a phone? I don't even know where my phone is at. Pretty much everybody got a phone. It's distraction on demand. Right? What usually happens when you got a little bit of free time or you're somewhere and you're waiting? What's the first thing that you do? You pull out your phone. And for most of us, some of us, you know, you might play Candy Crush. You get into, you know, your little games. But for a lot of us, we don't do the games as much. But what we do do is we turn to social media. How many of you guys, for sure, for sure, spend a substantial amount of time on your social media? Be honest. Oh, now y'all ain't going to raise your hand. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> So, as sometimes, you know, <laughs> as we're engaged on social media, TikTok, what do they do on TikTok? TikTok took it to a whole nother level. Because at least with, you know, Facebook, you know, you're kind of reading, like Twitter is just all words for the most part, right? Go ahead. All right, I'm going to make you familiar with it in just a second. <laughs> All right, the nature of um, Twitter. Twitter is, unless they've changed it, basically it's what you say. It's, you know, words that you give, you know, your thoughts. Then you got Facebook. Facebook takes it to the next level because it's not only your thoughts and even, it's even more of a social gathering than Twitter, Right. But Facebook is where you reconnect, and you also can throw in some pictures, you know, and some video, right? Facebook is still like a staple. But then you got Instagram, right? Instagram is you got to post either a picture or a video, and then you have your words. But ain't nobody really trying to read what you writing on Instagram. You can't write too much. They'll read your stuff on Facebook. But they ain't trying to read all of that on Instagram. And, and it's, Instagram is more so like for business, you know, that type of stuff, networking and so on and so forth. Now, then came along TikTok. TikTok, and you correct me if I'm wrong, some of y'all TikTokers that know better than I do because I don't have a TikTok account. TikTok addicts, the TikTok addicts, TikTok. That's what they call them. I don't know. You just make it. <laughs> So the thing about TikTok, right, I know one thing because I've seen, you know, 
the little faces, the little filters, and you're sitting there and you turn into a cat and you're turning into whatever. You're just sitting there making faces and, you know. Then TikTok, TikTok, what, you got me messed up now. <laughs> to, uh, tick, TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, one of the biggest things with TikTok, they started dancing. Everything is a dance. So you got some big old grown burly men that look like me that's doing Beyonce routines and all kind of crazy stuff. How many of y'all brothers been doing them Beyonce routines? Keep it. <laughs> <laughs> you got the hands going up for me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you got everybody's going crazy, and it's like every I can't even keep up. Like every day, it's another dance, another challenge. So now, I mean, the one good benefit of people, I'm, I'm assuming people must be a little bit more fit from all that dancing, but. Some of us don't engage in the dancing. You just do it for the laughs. You just watch it, right? So you ain't really getting no exercise, but you spend a substantial amount of time just being entertained, being entertained on TikTok, going to the shade room on, in, uh, on Instagram, watching the, all of the crazy stuff that they post on there. It's a big distraction. Am I right or am I wrong? All right. So watch this. Go to uh, 1 Peter, chapter 5, in verse 8. You ready? Yes, sir. You can go ahead and read it. 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. Yes, sir. Be sober. Hold on. Be sober. A lot of y'all, y'all think the only way of being sober is by not drinking alcohol. Right? That's the only thing that computes when you say be sober. But you don't understand that there are more things than just alcohol that can intoxicate you. There are more things than just alcohol that can take you off your square, essentially. Right? So go ahead and read that. Be sober. Be vigilant. And what? Be vigilant. Be vigilant. What does it mean to be vigilant? Pay attention. Be alert. Be watchful. Watch out. Make sure you're watching what's going on around you. How many times do we get laxed? Keep it real. Especially when you're in, in what you feel is your safe space. Your humble abode. Right? You get really relaxed. And you feel like there's nothing for you to really worry about. Now, mind you, there's a balance with everything, which we'll find out according to these scriptures. There is a time to rest and relax. After all, today is the what? The Shabbat, the Sabbath, which means what? Rest. But he said even in your time of resting, because historically, there was a time where our people hadn't been met with certain challenges. So our enemies thought, and they said, you know what? This people, on the seventh day, they don't do anything. They relaxing. The only thing that they do, they'll come together. They'll assemble. They'll read scripture and so on and so forth, right? And eat and just relax. We should attack them. On their day of rest. And they did it. And killed many of our people. Because a lot of our people. They were conflicted. They didn't know any better. They said well today is the day of rest. I don't think I can defend myself. So they lost their lives. During the time of Mattathias and them. He says you know what. We got to make sense of this. He says it's okay by law. It's not against the most high's laws. To defend yourself, to defend your nation, to, to defend what you believe in, the laws, and your wives and your children. We're going to fight. But prior to that, they were totally relaxed and carefree. 
we get like that sometimes. Where we feel like everything is good, nothing's wrong. And at that moment, you're not paying attention to the world. You're not paying attention to the dangers, the things that are brewing right around you. Right? Read it one more time, Mark. Be sober. Be vigilant. Uh huh. Because your adversary, the devil. Hold on. This is why. Because your adversary, you know what an adversary is, right? Your enemy. Your enemy, the devil. Who is the devil? Is the devil that character that you see in the all red jumpsuit with the horns? Right? With the pitchfork? Is that him with the little tail, with the little... Let me make sense of that image. You listening? All right. So-called black folk. Look around you. It's a bunch of so-called black folk in here, right? Are they actually black? Okay. Now it's, it's, it's so-called brown folks. It's Latinos. Chicanos, right? Look at them. Now watch this. For a long time, we was like, we different, right? Point out a light-skinned so-called black person. Now go find a Latino that's darker than them. Are we that different? Right? Now watch this. Because that, that, that's games that they play. Right? It's games that they play. Here's the thing. We got a thing called melanin. We got a thing that doesn't make us different colors, but makes us different shades of the same color. Mind you, we're bound by our forefathers, right? It's not about your quote-unquote color, right? Although we share melanin, right? You got Arab folks that are similar colors. You got East Indian folks that's blacker than any black person in here. Well, we don't call them us, right? Because we know when we look at them and we know that they got a different spirit than what we have. But you go to any ghetto, you're going to see so-called black and brown people doing the same stuff with the same spirit, right? But what separates us from so-called white folks? Are they white at all? What color are so-called white folk? They're actually red. Somebody said they're not that color. If you take a so-called white person... They are different shades of red because they lack the thing that makes you brown. Because ain't no black, ain't nobody black in here. Everybody brown. But they lack the thing that makes you brown. Most of them, right? You look at them, they lack that, so you see the blood through their skin, right? The blood shows forth and you see redness. Some are paler than others. Some are very, 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 very light pink. And some are very, 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 very red. To the point where you even call them rednecks. Right? True or false? Now watch this. Image of the devil. Out of all of the colors that the image of the devil could have been, why is he red? Why? Watch this. Okay. The horns. Where did the horns come from? Because there's a prophecy in the book of Daniel. Talks about Alexander, who's the epitome of the nation of Edom. And what was he described as? Huh? They even got coins, right, with his image. And, he, and, and, and on some of those coins, he has the image of his profile with what? Horns. Maybe that's the reason why when you see the devil, he got horns, right? Last but not least, well, where, where did that tail come from? That tail got a little bitty thing that we associate with what? Ain't that the same thing that you see on the cartoons with the dragons? Oh, but he's the red dragon that he speaks about in the book of Revelations. Tied into the same spirit of old. He said that same old serpent. 
That's who we talking about, so-called white man, so-called white folk. So read it one more time, Mark. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil. The who? The devil. The devil meaning what? The false accuser. He's going to falsely accuse. It wasn't me. It's everybody else but him. He's more criminal than any other nation has ever been. He will criminalize you till there is no one left standing. But he does more criminality. He's responsible for more atrocities that have happened not only in our past, but even today. He commits more crimes against humanity than anybody else on the earth. But yet he wants to say who? He wants to say you the problem. You the problem. That's the problem. They'll sit up there and they'll shoot somebody that looked just like this when this age and not feel anything about it and go on paid leave. Some of them, they'll even brag about it. Tamir Rice. Emmett Till. Right? So he says, be, be careful because your adversary, the devil, you got a whole race of people gunning for you. And it's not like they're just any race of people. They literally are. What did Job chapter 9 say? The earth has been given over in the hands of the what? The earth is in his hands right now. He runs. He rules. He controls the earth. Somebody will sit up here and try to shame you. Oh, that's just nonsense. What world do you live in? Huh? Because the world I live in, like the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, calls him Lucifer, says, if it ain't him, then I don't know. Tell me who is he if this ain't the man. How in the world can we fool ourselves into believing, being seduced into believing that we ain't got somebody that we got to prepare for? Go ahead and finish that off, Ark. Right? Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. As a what? As a roaring lion. He ain't coming to you as a poodle. We got poodles amongst our people. You a lion, but you done been convinced you a poodle. We could tie you up to one of these chairs and you won't move. Sit, boy. Right? But it says he's coming as a lion. What are the attributes of a lion? A lion is fierce. A lion ain't coming for no games. He ain't TikToking. He ain't about to do no dance routine. And every time they try to get a lion to do a dance routine, they end up getting what? Somebody going to get mauled. You play with that lion enough years, and now one day he get tired of you. What are he going to do to you? <laughs> Bible says as a lion. Go ahead, read that one more time. As a lion what? As a roaring lion. Walking about, seeking whom he may devour. As a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for prey. Are you going to be his prey? See, what kind, what, where your spirit at? Do you got on the whole armor of God? Or you caught slipping? Who caught lacking? Some of us, we be lacking in the spirit. You sitting up there, all you want to do is be entertained, entertained. You want to watch nothing but entertainment and be entertained. I don't want to think about nothing serious. And you don't even realize how much you lacking in the spirit. You got to have a balance. But you definitely better not be in balance, especially on that part, to the point where you got all your guards down. You got your guards up to your own people, but you got your guards way down for your real adversary. Go from there. Go to the book of Psalms. Book of Psalms, chapter 83. In verse 3. See, I can't come to you and just give you the type of lessons that you probably want to hear sometimes. I can't come here and break down certain things that you don't even need. I don't want to do that. I got to tell you what it is. I got to warn you. Go ahead, Psalms chapter 83 and verse 3. Verse 3, 
They have taken crafty counsel. What kind of counsel? Crafty counsel. Not any kind of counsel, but he says they took crafty counsel. Do you know what the word crafty means? Slick. Cunning. Something your average person, they ain't going to be able to understand when it's happening. They going to think it's all good. So he says they took what? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Who's his people? Who's the most high's people? If you don't know that, you better know that. You better, you better find that. You better make sure you fully understand and embrace that. You are the target. Quit letting them fool you telling you that you're just another black person or just another Hispanic person. Don't believe that nonsense. They know who you are and they are gunning for us. Go ahead and read. And consulted against thy hidden one. And they consulted against us. They consult. Here, here you are. You sitting up here thinking that somebody like, I'm, I'm going to give you a good example. What's that dude's name? The Edomite. Biden. That, uh, that was responsible uh, for Facebook. Uh, Zimmerman. There, what, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. There you go. Mark Zuckerberg. They set up there, tried to make people believe that Mark Zuckerberg was just your average college kid who had idle time and thought to himself, hey, maybe I'll start a thing called Facebook, right? He starts Facebook, right? And all of a sudden, it's this billion-dollar business, right? And then he ends up selling it and makes all of this money and so on and so forth. He's, and then when you actually go and look into it, you'll find out that he's a relative of, I forgot who it was, one of the families, one of the big families, the, uh, the Malachite families, the bootleg Jews. I don't know if it, I don't want to lie, but I don't know if it was the Rothschilds. I, I figured somebody would probably know, but yeah. You, you, but you, yeah, you know the information. So they would have us to believe that this is just some average Joe when all of this time that thing didn't happen through this guy. He was just utilized as the front man. That's your government coming and saying, all right, yeah, they're going to eat this up. And then it's crazy because you get to a point where you almost feel like you, like even with cell phones, yeah, these are trackers. They can track you with this. But it's gotten to a point, it's like, you feel like you need it to, in some way, some, some things they push you to a point where, like, you don't want to even have anything to do with technology, but some things you got to go to technology for. And you finally, it's, like, for me, I'm going to tell you, I'm one of them people, I'm like, man, I ain't doing that. I ain't giving them this. I ain't giving them that. And then I just drag it along, and finally it'd be like, if you can't do this unless you do that. Oh, man, all right. Raise your hand if you like me. Some of y'all, y'all just be like, man, I'm, I'm, I want the new thing. But me, I try to drag it along, but then I be fooling myself. They know where I'm at. When they, when they want to come and get me, the only person, the only entity that can stop them is the most high. Other than that, they can get you. They can get, they got you. Go ahead, go from there. Go to the book of Ephesians. Nah, I don't need it. So you got to remember that you got enemies. We forget. We want to sometimes feel like everything is good in this world. Like they're going to just let us reclaim our birthright. <laughs> we sitting up here gaining all types of notoriety. The whole world they ain't even debating no more whether or not we Israelites. Everybody and their mama some years ago would be the first ones to jump up. You ain't no Israelites. Now everybody in the bootleg church, yeah, I'm from the tribe of Judah. Everybody know they Israelites now, brown and so-called black people. Everybody know they ain't even debating it anymore. All your celebrities, yeah, I know we the chosen people. It's just common knowledge now. That don't concern you? Because <laughs> right now it's the quiet before the storm. Ain't nobody really getting pressed. Ain't nobody being threatened to have their lives taken just yet. 
They only doing that to the celebrities. <laughs> but I ain't came to your doorstep yet, so you don't know how real it is. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's get 11. We're going to go from 11 down to 18. Watch this. Read. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. So that's the first thing, man. A lot of times we, 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 we out of convenience, we don't like putting on that armor. We want to just get up out. We want to be comfortable. We want to move how we want to move. Right? When you put that armor on, it's, it's a little restrictive. It feel better if you're wearing it on a day-to-day -day basis because you get used to it, don't you? But before you get used to it, it's a bit uncomfortable, isn't it? Who wants to put all that armor on? You can't move the way you want to move. It slows you down. Right? So even though you got it, and you was excited probably when you first got your armor, right? You start saying, you know what? I'll be all right. And then you head out without that armor. You don't want to take that extra 20 minutes to put it on. Right? Read it one more time, Mark. Put on the whole armor of God. But the Bible says don't just put on some of it. Don't just pick up the sword. You need the sword and the shield. Don't just put on the helmet. You need the breastplate too. Go ahead, Mark. Crazy about it in war. You look at the first dynamic, the biggest thing, people be like, man, it's warfare out there. I want to put on everything, make sure I'm fully protected. You be putting on elbow pads, knee pads, shoulder pads. On every pad, groin, butt flap. The longer you've been in warfare, the more lean you start to become, man. I don't need the groin pad. Ah, I know without the butt flap. I don't want all the shoulder knee pads. I don't even want the full helmet. I want it cut so it's lighter and I don't want as much covering up. And I don't even want the big plates. I want the sappy plates. I want them cut thin. You start shaving more. I'm serious. You start shaving more and more off. To where it's like, shoot, if I ain't got to have all that, let me wear the minimum needed so I can go out there and be as, as, as free and loose. As I can. God. And that's even me. I'm not going to speak specifics, but there's some things in particular on a physical level where I'm lacking. Seriously. But we really be like that. You, you don't feel like going through the extra inconvenience of having to put on that whole armor. But the Bible says put on the what? The a little, whole armor. A little bit of the armor. The whole armor. Set the whole armor. Go ahead. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild. So hold the on. That you may be able to stand the what? Stand against the wilds of the devil. So what does the word wilds mean? I know you done probably read the scripture and you ain't never really went and found out what the word wilds mean. Who guilty? Keep it 100. You don't really, really know what the word wilds mean. If you know what the word wilds mean, raise your hand. Keep it real. I'm going to see who, if you know what the word wilds mean without looking in the dictionary, raise your hand. All right, I thank y'all for being honest. I'm going to tell you what the, word, what the word wild means. It says, devious or cunning stratagems. Now, we got to hold on. We got to stop at that word because I don't even know what stratum is. Stratum, wait, stratagems is. So the word stratagem, it means a plan or scheme, especially one used to outwit an opponent or achieve an end. So let's read it again. Wiles. Devious or cunning stratagems, which are plans to try to outwit an opponent, right? Employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what one wants, what you want them to do. So now, it's implying something. The devil has wiles. He has things that he wants to outwit you, trick you, and convince you to do. Hold on. Everybody, when you speak about the day, he just want to destroy. He just want to kill. He want to do this. He want to do that. But you never even thought of the fact that he want to trick you. Just like with these holidays, a lot of folks don't understand with that Christmas tree, when you lean down to grab that doggone present, it's literally physically causing you to bow down. Well, that ain't what that wasn't my intention. 
You know, people, well, I don't really celebrate the holidays. It's just about family. The fact that you partook, that was all they needed. The devil, that's all he needed. That's all Esau needed for you to do was just be a part of. Guilty by association. So then with all of this other stuff, man, you be thinking it's all harmless, but you done been a part of this and you a part of that and you get tricked. Read it one more time, Mark. But on the whole armor of God, uh -huh. that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So let me ask you a question. This is called deductive reasoning. If you do not have on the whole armor, you got on partial armor, what chances do you stand against the wiles of the devil? Because everybody will tell you, I ain't been deceived by nothing. I already know. I ain't tripping. I ain't, I ain't got to worry about me. Yes, ma'am. We're going to get to it right here. It's going to tell you what the armor is right here. We're going to read it. We're going to read all the way down to 18. So watch this. Watch this. Read verse 12. Verse 12. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So now this is the first clue. What he's telling you right there is he ain't, he's not talking about your actual physical manifestation of armor. He said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but what? But against principalities. What are principalities? Government. Rulership. Politics and policies. Principalities, right? Go ahead. Against powers. Against powers. Governments and countries, go ahead. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. The rulers of the darkness of this world. The world you live in is a dark place. And the rulers are all rulers of darkness. People sitting up here, oh, I'm so glad Biden won. Ooh, we. It ain't no light in him. What, what, what the book of Isaiah chapter 8 and 20 say? It says if they, don't, if they don't do according to this word, there is no light in them. Biden, ain't, he ain't got no light in him. It ain't going to be a brighter day with him. Everybody that they set up as wicked as all outdoors. And it's going to further their wicked agenda. You sit up here, well, I'm just, because they didn't they didn't play the game to Get you, you got all kind of anxiety because Trump acting a fool on Twitter. Trump don't, Trump don't run at all. He's a puppet. Biden is a puppet. But they got you like, oh, man, I sure enough rather have Biden. Oh, as long as Trump up, oh, I don't know. Things going to be bad. Then they got you so scared because you wanted to get Trump out of there. Now you're like, I hope they keep Trump, Trump in there because if Trump don't win, all his people going to act up. Playing games with your emotions. Ain't that what they do? It don't matter to me either way. Because I already know what's inevitably going to happen because the words say it. It's going to be war. Go ahead. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. It's crazy how we're able to look at government and think that government, like they can't be operating on, on a wicked frequency. Like, you know, all of the wickedness is like on the streets and all of that. These people, oh, that's the law. They're going to do the right thing. Oh, police. That's the way a lot of our people still think. That's the way you don't think anymore. But once upon a time, not too long ago, you thought like that. Well, let's... Leave it in the law's hand. They'll do the right thing. No, they're not. Wickedness, it trickles from the very top. The top is the most wicked. That's why I'm telling folks years ago, and I ain't bragging or nothing, all praise be to the most high. It's telling people years ago how wicked the industry was. They didn't want to hear it. Now it's common knowledge. It's common knowledge now. Telling them years ago, oh, no, no, that's just your experience. That's what you think. Well, why do you believe that? Okay. And the higher you want to get up, the more you got to pay. 
the more wicked you got to become. The more you got to tolerate. The more secrets you got to keep. You ever heard of the casting couch? Yeah. Real talk. Some of y'all probably don't know what the casting couch is. That's where you give a favor for a favor. Go ahead. 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Uh huh. And having done all to stand. Having done all to stand, you're going to need to have on your full armor to be able to stand. Stop thinking that you're going to be able to have put on your armor and make it. You ain't going to endure to the end. Quit half-stepping. You got to quit half-stepping. We've been half-stepping too long. You want to be an Israelite, but you don't want to act right. You an Israelite with an attitude a couple of days out of the week. You an Israelite that don't want to be a brother or don't want to be a sister half of the time because you tired or you don't like so-and-so. You want to do certain things. You want to treat it like it's trail mix. You ain't no better than these bootleg Christians. If you're going to do it, do it all the way. Go ahead. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Uh -huh. And having done all to stand. Go ahead, 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. So now he's telling you what it is. He said your loins, right? That's your, your, your bottom area, your mid and your bottom area. You got to have that girt about with truth. Now, what's crazy is, think about it. What come out of your loins? You know what come out of a man's loins, right? That thing that he gives to, to the woman. And then she, in terms, nourishes it for a season. It comes out, and then she bursts it. That's what come out of your loins. So what is the Bible saying? Where that, why truth? Why gird it with truth? He's saying you got to protect your progeny. You got to protect your generations. The only way you're going to protect them is primarily through giving them the truth. They got to know who they are. They not only got to know who they are, they got to know who their enemies are. That's the reason why you in the situation you was in. You was disconnected. Like the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, you was disconnected from the commonwealth of your nation. Prior to somebody saying, hey, brother, you were Israelite. You had no clue. You was disconnected from being the greatest people on the face of this earth. We had, we didn't just have a name, but we had, how many of y'all struggle? You struggle to make ends meet. We were a rich people. What nobody lacking in our heyday. And we got disconnected from all of that. Why? Because somebody began to tell a lie and they disconnected us from the truth of who we are. And what we needed to do to maintain our spot on the top. That's why he said make sure you gird that, them loins with truth. Because that's the only thing that's going to allow you to sustain through generations. Go ahead. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And then that, that's the breastplate right here. It, 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 it's right here. What's all behind this? There you go, my man. All of your vital organs are right there behind that breastplate. If you get hit in any of those vital organs, then that's curtains, lights out. He said the only thing that's going to protect you from losing your life immediately, right, is what? The breastplate of what? Righteous. You got to keep these laws. That's the only thing that's going to sustain your immediate life. That's what it is. But watch this. Read. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He said, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Why, why the word preparation? Because didn't he tell us, he says, be as pilgrims. What is the nature of a pilgrim? A pilgrim is ready to move. 
He told us, he said, get you, get, you, get you a bag. Make sure you got the essentials, but don't take too much. Be ready to move. That's what a, what a, what a term Hebrew comes from. One of our forefathers, Ibar, sojourner, somebody that's ready to cross over. He said, you got to be ready to move. And then not only preparation, but preparation of the gospel of peace. Why the gospel of peace? The word gospel means what? Good news. The good news of peace. Where is that peace? And where are we supposed to get that peace? Well, our city is called Yerubah Shalom, city of peace. He said, this ain't your resting place. Your peace is when you get home. You sitting up here, you want to be at peace here, but you ought to be focused on doing what? On getting home. That's why he says that. Have your feet ready so you can move. You get one of them feet shot and guess what's going to happen? You demobilize. You ain't moving nowhere. You staying here, man down. That's what makes sense, right? Go ahead and read. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Hold on. He said, and above all, he said, you're going to need this. You're going to need a shield of what? Of faith. Of faith. Faith ain't that thing that they taught you about in the bootleg church. I don't know how it's going to happen. Don't matter what. I just know it's going to happen. God is going to. No, the Bible says faith is the what? The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. You got substance and you got evidence. Those are two things that are what? Tangible. He says, I ain't tell you to believe nothing without giving you the proof. So when he said what? And above all, taking the shield of faith. That was the thing about our forefather Abraham. He had faith. Based off of what the Most High had showed him, he was willing to move. What have you been shown? And why are you unwilling to move like Abraham was willing to move? We came, we came straight up out of Egypt. And still had doubts. He parted a Red Sea for us and we still was doubting. He said, what are all of these doubts for? I done showed you enough. You ought to be ready to move. Watch this. Read. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. He said, you ought to be able to quench all the fiery darts with what? Your shield of faith. Why? Because faith is exemplified. With how you will this right here. Folks get up here and they try to hit you with darts, doctrines. And you say, oh, nope, I know better than that. You hold that up. Nope. Knock that dart down. Go ahead. And take the helmet of salvation. Uh-huh. And what? And the sword of the spirit. Hold on. That, that helmet first. The helmet. That helmet important. That head is the... That's the brain. That's You ain't got that head. That head get blown away. That body going to fall. But what's in that head? Your mind. What should your mind be on? Salvation. Being saved. Our mind be on everything else but salvation. Our mind be on what we going to eat. Who we going to get with. Who we going to knock out? Our mind be on everything but salvation. What, 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 what's the next thing I'm going to purchase? But we don't be focused on salvation. Seek ye the kingdom first. You ought to be focused on being saved first. That's what your mind always has to be on. Because that's the same thing like he said. That's what keeps a soldier alive. He's worried about salvation, being saved. Am I going to make it up out of here to go back to see my family? Am I right or am I wrong, God? You're right. Because you served. I'm trying to get home. You ain't that right, champ? I'm trying to get home. That's it. Go ahead. And the sword... Of the spirit. And that's where the sword come in. That spirit is the sword. That spirit cut them up. 
How's that spirit manifested? That's when you exemplify and you tell this. Cut them up with this word. That's why the Bible says that the word is like a, a double-edged sword. It don't matter which way you swing it. It's going to cut somebody's spirit if they ain't right. Go ahead. Which is the word of God. And he tells you exactly what that sword is. It's the word of the most high. This is the sword right here. You hear a brother talking about he got his sword or he forgot his sword or he lost his sword. This is the sword he talking about. Go ahead. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So hold on. He said praying always. Does that mean like 24-7 you pray? No. But always meaning what? Pray often. Daniel prayed three times a day. At least do something near that too. When you're praying like a once or twice a week, that's a problem. You ought to be praying daily. Go ahead. In supplication of spirit and watching there and too. Doing what? And watching. Who? Hold on. Same thing. He said you ought to be doing what? Watch. Some of y'all feel like y'all ain't got to watch because somebody else watching. You hoping everybody, I hope my leaders is watching. You better be extra eyes. Mm -hmm. All of us better be watching. Because sometimes you might be the eyes that catch something that's about to hit your leader. You might be an aid and a help to us. We all ought to be watching, read. With all perseverance and supplication for all saints. For all saints. Go from there. Get to the book, Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs 12 and 26. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 26. Yep. The righteous... Is more excellent than his neighbor. How many of y'all, you more excellent than your neighbor in keeping these commandments? Raise your hand. Some of us got some wicked neighbors. Keep it 100. You ain't judging them. Like, you more excellent in keeping these commandments than your neighbor, right? Because most of us, we don't live next to Israelites that's keeping these commandments, right? But watch this, read. But the way of the wicked. But the way of the wicked. Things that they do, things that they like to do, how they like to do things. Go ahead. Seduce it. It will seduce you. You stand around long enough, be at the function long enough, be in certain conversations long enough. Guess what's going to happen? You mess around and be around the homies too much. You, you already know you look, you, hey, I used to smoke. I knew when I was in this truth, especially earlier on, and I, I had a couple of times where they tried to get me, oh, just come through, we kicking it, whoop, whoop. They get to passing it, hey, and they playing with you, nigga, you, oh, oh you righteous now, nigga. Oh, nigga. It's certain stuff I, hey, I don't need to be around that. Some of y'all, you know, it was either we, women, men, illegal ways of getting money, different stuff for different people, right? Here's the thing with social media we got to be careful about because social media is such a great tool to use if you use it for the right reasons. You can get your little entertainment, your little, you know, like like we talked about, but when it becomes a thing where you like just being entertained and the things is popping up is all of the things that you struggle in the spirit with, now you got a problem on your hands. Used to be a time where it was like, I got to get from around the homies. Now it'd be a time you got to get from around certain apps. Straight up. Some of y'all been your past life, you know, you was doing a certain thing and your social media know that. And every now and then they pull up some of the old stuff that you like. You be like, whoa. <laughs> Hold on. 
right? Be mindful of that. Go from there. Book of Ecclesiasticus. I know I didn't say nothing foreign. Somebody believe me. Somebody can bear witness. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Witness. Raise your hand if you can be a witness. I said, raise your hand if you can be a witness. Keep it one on it. Time to time, yeah. I said, I got to resist the devil. Ecclesiastes chapter 32 and verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 32 in verse 20. Uh-huh. Go not in a way wherein thou mayest fall. Oh, that's heavy right there. Go not in a way where thou mayest fall. If I know if I go over so-and-so them house, I'm going to probably fall, then guess what? I don't need to go over so-and-so them house. If I know if I hit this certain, you know, app or this certain window that I might fall, then I better not go into that certain place on that app that's going to make me fall. That's the common sense behind this. And then hold yourself accountable. Confess your, what, you, what, you, what your issue is to somebody so they can hold you accountable. No, I could do it. I'm all right. Oh, yeah. When you, you tell yourself that you good and you know you ain't good or you think you good, but you purposely don't put nobody, alarm anybody that could, like, check you because you don't want to hear. Like, sometimes you got to do that to yourself. You know, you got to put yourself in a position where somebody going to be on your head. Hey, you making sure. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I'm not. But at least it keep you out of danger. Straight up, it keep you out of danger. Right? Read that one more time. I, like, I had to learn that. Hold on. I had to learn to tell on myself. Certain things I just had to tell on myself. I had to tell on myself. I knew. I'm like, man, I'm weak. I don't tell somebody and it had them hold me responsible. I ain't going to do the right thing until you get strong enough where you can do the right thing. Go ahead. Go not in a way wherein thou mayest fall Uh huh. and stumble not among the stones. Stumble not amongst the stones. Go from there. Go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 1. Yeah, yeah. Book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Uh huh. That's us. We, we, you know, once upon a time, you know, we was dead. We was in the congregation of the dead. Said he quickened us, meaning he made us alive again. He he rose, we we rose from the dead. He he breathed the breath of life back into us, and we, you know, became a living spirit again, right? But watch this, read. When in times past you walked according to the course of this world. In times past, we walked according to the course of this world. Remember, we was dead in sins and trespasses, right? But we got quickened from that, right? Meaning we're no longer supposed to be trespassing, committing sins and transgressions that we once used to do, right? Right? But he says, wherein time passed, you walked according to the course of this world. Meaning what? This world, their way is a way of sin, is a way of trespassing against the laws of the Most High. That's what it is. And if you don't believe that, you're setting yourself up for failure. Go ahead. According to the prince of the power of the air. Now, that's the heavy part. According to the prince of the power of the air. I tried to look up that word air and say, let me make sure we're using this contextually. And when you look up that word, it tells you it's talking about the atmosphere. We're really talking about the air itself, the atmosphere itself. So what is this talking about? How do your phones connect? How does your television connect? How does your internet connect? Huh? 
out of the mouth of babes. You said Wi-Fi. Is that Wi-Fi connected to a wire? It is? Huh? Put it like this. How can I pick up my phone and call any, any one of y'all? And I don't see no wires attached. How I do that? Huh? Frequencies, waves, how do they travel? Through the air. <laughs> now, this was written how long ago? This was written a couple, like, a little bit less. Well, now, nah, maybe about, yeah, about 2,000 years ago. It's written about 2,000 years ago, and they already knew what it was. Communicating through the air. How I send you an elaborate photo with all of these different colors, right? Definition. And I say, all right, Kahan, I'm going to email you this. And I say, boop, 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 boop. You got it? Oh, I got it. How does that happen? Right? There are certain aspects of the function which require certain machines, certain um, towers and, and um, satellite dishes and things of that nature. But essentially what is still going to happen is there are going to be waves that literally travel through the air. So who is this prince? Go ahead, Ock. Now, it's not considered witchcraft, but it's letting you know. I'll give you an example. It's just like in the military, right? It's important to know when you go into certain areas and certain regions who controls the airspace, right? So what the Bible is letting you know that he controls the airspace and he's using that to have his will be done. So it's not like you send an email and, you know, that's wrong. Nah, but guess what? The majority of the emails that are getting sent in this world are not emails of righteousness. Whole bunch of wickedness going on. And it's going on for the most part in secret. Who can stop it? It ain't like you can say, are oh, you about to email that? Oh, no. I intersected that. You can't stop it. But it's letting us know because we'll sit up here and we'll attribute things to just, you know, certain people. But it says, look, nah, the enemy, Satan, who's the power source of the so-called white man, he controls the air. Don't get it twisted. Read it one more time. So where in, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. According to him. That's what we in times past. We was walking according to his program. But watch this read. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And he says that same spirit is the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. Meaning the Israelites that refuse to keep God's commandments as well as all the other nations. That's a spirit, which is a spirit of disobedience that works in everybody else. But watch this, he even gets more detail. Verse 3. Verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh. Oh, that's heavy right there. Ooh, how many lustful conversations have you had? Boy, some of y'all blushing. He had a gang of lustful conversations. <laughs> gang of unrighteous conversations. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling what? Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Ooh, that's a heavy one. You got to read that one right. Desiring the what? The desires of the flesh and of the mind. And of the mind. Ooh. Because it ain't all about the flesh and what you did. A lot of things you thought. 
Some of the things you still thinking, you waiting for the opportunity. Hoping you can, hey, well, you know, if it just happened, it wouldn't be my fault. You know, we get the reasoning. We got we got that that slick reasoning. I mean, that's what the if that's what it is, that's what the most I would have had it to be. I mean, what I mean, it is what it is. Some of y'all look, <laughs> you already know her. <laughs> you ever seen somebody, you probably didn't have that, and you have to check that in yourself. I've heard many people say that, and I, I've had to check myself on that. Well, technically, if it's happening and that was the will of the most high, you, mean, you better knock it off. You better knock it off. Go ahead. It was God that made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was in his plan. He put it in front of me. <laughs> Go ahead. Now it says, and were by nature the children of wrath. Even as others. By nature, we was the children of wrath. We was mad, tearing up stuff. My, how we've changed. Some of us were some violent people before this truth. Some of us was violent, and some of us was just destructive in other ways. You might not have been violent, but you was destructive in other ways. Some of y'all could do way more violence to somebody than... That you know more violence than somebody who can knock you out with their hands. You could cut with your words like no other person could. You was able to slice and dice straight up. But watch this read. Verse four. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, mm -hmm. even when we were dead in sin. Even when we, we we was dead, and the Most High kept you. I look at some of the stuff, my man, my past. I, everybody got a story that you live long enough, you're going to have a story to tell. I got a story. And I look and I said, man, I, I know a number of times where I could easily not be here. And throughout all of that, all that stuff that you did, he still preserved you. Wow. But watch this, read. Have quickened us together with Christ. Mm -hmm. By grace you are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Mashiach Yahweh Go ahead. In the ages to come, uh -huh. he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Mashiach. So when he said in the ages to come, what is he talking about? The ages to come. Was he just talking about the ages to come from where he was at? Now, he was talking about when we get that kingdom, we're going to live forever. We got plenty of ages to come. And how we'll be sitting together in heavenly places. That's what we ought to be focused on. A lot of times we know we Israelites. We believe, but we, we kind of, we get sucked into the world. And we ain't thinking about salvation. We ain't thinking about the kingdom. We just thinking about getting ours right now. We thinking about making sure so and so don't disrespect us right now. And that's it. He said make sure you don't lose sight of the kingdom. Go ahead. Verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. By grace. That's the thing that you got to understand because somebody cared enough to give you a little bit more time to get it together. That's why you're here. The bootleg Christians got it misconstrued because they'll say, oh, grace, grace, we saved by grace. You ain't, the Bible says ye are not saved yet. He said, I'm, give, I'm giving you time to get it right. You ain't saved yet. I'm going to give you some time. You ain't got the money to pay that bill, but you still owe. I'm going to give you some more time to come up with that money that you owe me. That's what he's saying. So don't get it misconstrued. Oh, we all good now. Nah. He said you got to work off your salvation by the blood of with Christ, fear and trembling. Yeah, he said it's going to be blood. He said, yeah, it ain't going to just be Christ's blood. Some of us got to shed blood. He said, I that one scripture, he said, and you ain't even, you ain't even, uh, what? oh, man, I forgot how it's worded. He said, you ain't even shed no blood yet. You haven't even been tested unto shedding your blood yet. And you all bent out of shape. 
Because people ridiculing you and persecuting you and saying, oh, you in the cult. Oh, you ain't the same no more. You all been out of shape. He said, wait till they start putting guns to your head and say, you a what? Say you Israelite, I'm going to blow your brain. Wait till they get there and let's see what you're going to say then. He said, are you going to ride for me then? See, some folks, they don't like, they are scared their congregation the way they feel like. They, they scared to tell these, I got to say what this word say. It is what it is. But guess what? The good thing about it, we ain't got too long before we going home. That's real talk. Was that all of that? And that not of yourselves. Not of who? And that not of yourself. See, that's the thing. Sometimes you got to check yourself. You think you in this truth because you chose to be in here. He said, you ain't choose me. I chose you. He said, this ain't of you. This ain't of yourself. You ain't here because of you. Plenty of times you probably thought about falling off, but some, for some odd reason, you still right here. How many times have you got tired of the folks that was around you in the so-called truth? You said, I can't stand these niggas. Tired of them. <laughs> but yet, look where you at. You still right here. That's a gift from the Heavenly Father. Because there's so many people that walked away. So many people that says, I'm, I'm done with this. Go ahead, finish that off. It is the gift of God. Remember, this is a gift. The spirit that you got, the mind that you got, that's a gift. A gift that not everybody has and not everybody is willing to receive. You got so many of your loved ones that ain't willing to receive this. Still some time, but you got some folks that's identical twins. You sit up there and watch TV, you think, oh, one twin do it, the other twin going to do it. Not the case. You got a choice to make. Share the flesh, but not the spirit? Oh, no. When we, uh, check this out. Yeah, ex exactly. Share the same sack, identical DNA, all of that. But guess what? At the end of the day, it was two different spirits that were sent down. And they both got to make a choice. That's it. It's a gift. Because the thing is, too, you might say, oh, yeah, I got to make a choice. He said, hey, look, even with you making a choice, he said, I ordained you before the foundation of the earth. I already chose you. How many things you could, man, you weren't even born in this country. How many things could you be doing now, elder? But the most high said, nope, you're going to be right here. Who would have ever thought you go from Peru to one day being in Africa? Huh? How many people have you been a blessing to? Most High said, nope. I'm giving you this. This is what I'm telling you. This is what your spirit is going to do. There's sometimes when we think, oh, I'm going to live life. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be this. Most High said, nope. Nope. <laughs> this is what's going to be in your spirit. You're going to do this. Go from there. Get the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And we're going to go verse 1 through 10, and then we're going to jump down to 16. Yep. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Start at verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. Yep. A good name is better than a precious ointment. A good name is better than a precious ointment. You know about the moim Messiah. You know, it's crazy because, you know, even myself sometimes, you know, I don't, I, I realize how long I've been detached from, from having the finer things. There was a time where we had the finer things. Some of y'all still, you got to have the finer things. Like I got my brother here. He likes the finer things within reason. He's going to make sure he's smelling a certain type of way. He going to make sure he look in a certain type of way. He's serious about that. You ain't going to never catch him lacking on his appearance. And you might catch me looking rough. 
missing teeth. Right? I go. I gotta fix it. I'm. I'm gonna get it right, Mama. I got the memo. Right? Guess what though? It's still in our DNA. We want. We want to look like something. We want to feel good. We want to enjoy some of the finer things. So when my brother started introducing us to these oils, not the perfumes, not just the smell, but the oils, it don't leave all of the extras. You got the good uncut, right? It take your spirit on a, like to another level. Like it, it enhances your presence, brings forth a, a whole different ambiance, a whole different experience. Back then, they were even more in tune and understood how important oils and ointments were, right? So when he says a good name is better than precious ointments, see, here's the thing. Ointment also, a lot of ointments have medicinal purposes. I had an ointment not too long ago rubbed on my back. As my back was aching. It was hurting bad. And boy, that ointment was rubbed on my back. I said, oh, I don't feel it no more. I said, good. is it? Is this ah, I feel good. What kind of magic is this? He said, no, nah, it ain't magic. It's healing. So when the Bible says a good name is better than that, a good name is better than feeling good about yourself. Feeling good, period. When you're down and out and you need something, a healing agency to help. He said having a good name is better than all of that. It's better than how you feel. A lot of times when you're trying to have a good name, you go through hell. You don't have an easy walk. Whole lot of growing pains. But he said, but having a good name is still better than whatever you got to endure, endure it. But you want to have a good name. Go ahead. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. Now, that's heavy right there. He's not saying that you can't celebrate and be happy for the birth of these beautiful little babies, but he's making a point. He said the day of one's death better than the day of one's birth. Let's find out why. Read. It is better to go to a house of mourning. Hold on. It's better to go to a house of mourning. What? Than the what? Than to go to the house of feasting. But now, we feast how many times throughout the year? How many scriptures we got to talk about how important it is to feast? Then he tell us by law, you better be glad when you feasting. You better not be stank-faced. You better get you some good liquor. Y'all better have a good time and party. That's what the Bible says. So now what is this? And he, he says the house of mourning is better than the house of feasting. Feasting all that good food. We about to feast tomorrow. How is the house of mourning better than the house of feasting? How is that so? Who wants to be in a situation where they mourning? What is he speaking of? Read on. For that is the end of all men. Uh-huh. And the living will lay it to his heart. So now what is he saying? What he's saying is some people get caught up. In feasting, caught up in birth and babies. You ever find like sometimes you do more for the baby than you do for the people that's about to leave up out of here? You pay more attention to the babies than the old person. You don't you leave them up in the room by themselves. Ain't nobody visiting. Ain't nobody building them up. Am I lying? Right or wrong? Who done did more? Who's more worthy? You would think the person that has given their lives to house, you already know. Not that we're not supposed to give the babies the attention that we give them, but don't neglect those that are towards the end of their journey. But see, even in regards to our own selves, we don't think like that. We, we want to be all about the fun. But we forget about the importance of making sure we prepare for what's to come. Go ahead and read. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. That's the whole point. Yeah, we'd rather be smiling. The Bible tells you how laughter can keep you. It can cause you to live a longer life. 
and sorrow can cause you to live a shorter life. So it's not that the Bible is contradicting itself when it says sorrow is better than laughter. But what it's telling you is make sure that you keep in mind to pay attention to the important things that you're going to have to face when it's all said and done. And he says specifically, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart, meaning the mind, is made better. You don't learn through the good times. You learn through the difficult times. You learn through the losses. You learn through the struggle. That's when you calibrate and you start thinking and reasoning and saying, okay, this is how I can better be suited to handle this or to handle that. Go ahead and read. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. Uh-huh, but what? But the heart of fools. The mind of the wise is in what? In the house of mourning. But go ahead. But the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Yeah, the fool, I, I, they just want to turn up. It's all about to turn up. But you ain't learning nothing. You ain't been through nothing. You got to go through something to know something. How many of y'all done been through something in your life? Raise your hand. You done been through something. And that made you who you are. But go ahead and read. It is better to hear, it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise. You know what a rebuke is, right? Strong correction. It's better to hear somebody with wisdom rebuke you. Hey, Hawkman, you need to get it right. Sis, you out of order. You need to. It's better to hear that than the what? Than for a man to hear the song of fools. Than for a man to hear the song of fools. Read that one more time. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise uh -huh. than for a man to hear the song of the fool. Than for a man to hear the song of fools. What is the song of fools? Huh? I'm going to give you a better one. Watch this. So I should read more self-help books and not always be listening to Uzi and everyone else? There you go. We got plenty of songs of fools. A lot of the music that a lot of our people listen to. It's just songs of fools. Nonsense that don't feed your spirit, right? We be sitting up there, I just like the beat. You know, you be whopping. I just like the beat to whop. I ain't, I ain't really listen to the words. For you know it, it got you wild. It got you, you know. I, man, I know some folks that did some strange things when the beat dropped. Some things that was out of character. And they be like, I don't, I don't know what got into me. I don't normally do that. <laughs> I don't normally be dropping it to the flow. But that bass hitting, it just it sent the vibration. For you know what she was. Yeah, you're working with. You already know. Them certain, them certain songs come on, I don't care who you are. You're going to be like, okay, hey. Uh, you gonna get to moving I, I'm telling you Trust me I used to be a DJ I already knew what it was Especially all uh, You get a little liquor in your system I already knew Alright Yeah Everybody Everybody in the head around Oh yeah they ready for this Put on that Put on that Luke Put on that DMX Bring it Here comes the boom Put in that Tupac What's your phone number well, you know it now. Now you already know what it is. You know, some of y'all already. Know. I've been there before. I, <laughs> I took a couple of home. <laughs> that music got a way of moving your soul. <laughs> you got to be careful. But go ahead. Was that all of that? For as the crackling of thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of of the fool. Uh huh. This also is vanity. He said that's all vanity. Go ahead. Surely, oppression maketh the wise man mad. Surely, oppression maketh the wise man mad. Not mad as in, oh, mad. No, the word mad really means what? Crazy. It'll make someone that usually is seen to have wisdom, it'll make you do some crazy things. Oppression. It'll make you, who has always been an upstanding, level-minded person, Go and take penitentiary chances because you're so oppressed and you got to figure out a way to feed your family. 100. Go ahead. 
And a gift destroyed the heart. And a gift will destroy the heart. Somebody give you a gift and you be like, oh, oh. make you bias. Go ahead. Better is better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. So better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Don't forget, from the very beginning, we was talking about referencing the babies, referencing the name. He's saying better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. You just starting off. He said, he that endure to the what? End. To the end shall be saved. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. You ain't saved yet. You ain't endured to the end. You ain't saved. Go ahead. And the patient in the spirit is better than the proud in spirit. The patient in the spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. whole lot of proud Israelites. You better be patient, not proud. Go ahead. Be not hasty in the spirit to be angry. And a whole lot of folks be hasty in the spirit to be angry. We get mad at everything. I'm mad at this. I'm mad at that. I can't, be I can't believe you. You, you, you. They they doing what? They said what? We going to uh, up. Uh. Nah. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For what? For anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Anger resteth in the bosoms of fools. Fools get mad and they jump and do some foolish things. And people get hurt. They get hurt. Go ahead. Say thou not. What is the cause that the former days were better than these? And some people be on that, man. It was, man, I get guaranteed it was better back in the days, man. It's now, man. It's some, man. He said, man, do you realize you near the end? How in the world you think it was better back then? It should have been harder to keep the faith back then. You actually near the end now. You at the end end. Now you ought to be even more convinced than ever. You seeing all of the wickedness unfolding and everything. The whole world is pretty much admitting that we're Israelites now. Whoever thought that they'd see that? You talking about, oh, it was better back then. You got it the best right now. Yeah, you got to go through some tough times. But guess what? At least you know that we at the end. <laughs> got to get a Bible some credibility. Everything that is saying, call this place Egypt, Sodom, it's all manifesting right in front of you. You got to give it some type of credit. But watch this. Go ahead. For thou... For thou does not inquire wisely concerning this. You don't inquire wisely concerning that. Drop down to verse 16. 16 through 18. Be not righteous over much. So hold on. This, this is big right here. Because we got some folks in, 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 within our people, within the nation. They don't understand sometimes. They be a little bit over-righteous. You say, how you be over-righteous? We're supposed to keep all the commandments, right? How you going to be over-righteous? Well, being over-righteous is not just keeping all the commandments. Being over-righteous is trying to, what's the best way of saying this? And it's not even necessarily what you do, but it is what you do. But not only when you try, but then you also want to impress upon others to try to do the impossible, things that are out of your control. Well, technically, everything on the earth is defiled. So we shouldn't be eating anything. Then what are you going to eat? <laughs> Technically, everywhere we go, it's actually unclean because even the ground that we stand on because so-and-so. And so technically, if anything, so how many of y'all know how to levitate? Right? You going to get in a bubble and stay in the bubble your whole life? Like. That's that's what a, being over righteous is. You take it to the furthest extent and then you got expectations for other people. Nah, you got to figure out one thing I learned about the scripture that a lot of people haven't learned. Some people are learning. Some people know. Few know. You get an opportunity to say I know, but you can't just say you know, but you got to walk in it. The Bible teaches balance. Balance doesn't mean, oh, see, it's balanced. That means I could do some wicked stuff, too. No, that's not what I'm saying. No, not at all. Have a good balance between good <laughs> and evil. But there is a balance with everything. Everything. The Bible teaches balance. Things that are within the balance and reason of the scripture. 
Read that one more time. Be not righteous over much. Uh huh. Neither make thyself over wise. Make yourself over wise. You got some people, all they want to do is read, 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 and you ain't applying. Oh, like conversation I had with one of my, my one of my sisters and a couple of brothers, right? I said this a while back, and somebody didn't know what I was saying, and then I had to explain it. I said, you can't spend your whole life with your nose buried in this book. They said, what? Hold on. Let me get away from him. They didn't understand it. You got to pull your nose up out of this and actually go and apply it. Our folks wasn't walking around. They didn't even have the luxury of walking around with, with this. They had scrolls that had to be read only by people that had the authority, right, and had the, uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Had the um, access, right, to be able to literally read the scrolls. Other than that, you got people that lived their whole lives and were never actually able to read the scroll for themselves. So they would go, especially on Sabbaths, and listen in the convocations to the scrolls being read, to the laws and the history being read. And they had to make sure, along with that, the understanding that was being given by the teachers, by the priests, and they had to take that with them. That was their experience. So the fact that you got this and you can pick it up when you want to pick it up, it's a blessing. But it's also when you're not careful, you can definitely be over righteous and try to be over wise. Well, hold on. This say you better find that balance. Find the balance. But go ahead and read. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Oh, why shouldest you destroy yourself? How are you going to destroy yourself trying to be wise? The Bible knows something that obviously we ain't figured out. Solomon told, he told us, he said, man, I did all of this for y'all. He said, but this is tedious. That's what he said. This is where this is. This will wear down your spirit. This will wear down your flesh. Studying. How many brothers up in here study to teach? I mean, how, how much does it take out of you? For a person like me, they expect me to come once a week, every week at least, and come and give a lesson that everybody can approve of that ain't going to bore you to death, that makes sense, that can uplift you. And they might, you might think, because like, you, you don't think about the process. There's a process behind that. A lot goes into it. So he's saying, I don't want you living every moment of your life doing that. You also got to... I got to raise kids. I got to be a brother. He said, I also want you to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Go ahead and read. It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. Uh, it, verse 17. Oh, yeah, my bad. Verse 17. Be not over much wicked. But there go the balance. Somebody try to be over righteous. Then he said, you know what? You're going to have some of your people. He said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Because if you lukewarm, I do what? I spew you out. So what is he saying? He's saying if you're an Israelite, but you ain't ready to walk this walk, he said, I'd rather you go out there and be in the world. Don't be sitting up here talking about you this and that, and you know you have stepping. He said, I don't like that. He said, I'll respect you more if you're just out in the world and you can just acknowledge that. Ain't that heavy? Most high is a real one. He's a real one. But then he said, even with that, there's limits to that. You in that world, you hoping you get the opportunity, that wake up call, and you come back when you get it right, right? He said, but even when you out there, there's still certain guidelines. Don't go too far. Don't be too wicked. There's a certain level of wickedness. You done went too far. It ain't no coming back from that. Ain't this word heavy? This word is, this word is multifaceted. Go ahead. Watch this. Read that. Be not over much wicked. Neither uh -huh. be thou foolish. Neither be thou foolish. Don't he said, now you can be anything you want to be, but don't be a fool. Have the common sense to know who you are. Even the heathen was respected. The, the heathen woman. And she came and she was asking for the blessings uh, from Yahweh Shai. And 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 and, Yah and, and Yahweh Shai had to let her know what it was, but she acknowledged. She said, I know I ain't nothing but a dog. I know my place. I know I'm one of these other nations. 
She said, even because he said, uh, it, it's not meat. He, Yahweh Shah said, it's not meat for me to give the children, meaning the children of Israel's bread, to the dogs. She just say, nah, uh, nah, uh. You calling me a dog? Uh, uh. I ain't no dog. I'm a human being. She didn't say that. You know what she said? She said, true, I'm a dog. I acknowledge that. But even the dogs lick up the crumbs from the master's table. She knew her place. She accepted that. Sometimes you got to be in this world. You got some people that do. They be like, man, I know. I know. I know this stuff sound right, but I ain't ready. Man, you better hope you get a chance to get it right. But they ain't out there doing X, Y, and Z. Man, Bible is heavy, right? It's heavy. It says, why should it not die before that time and it's not good? Verse 18. Read it one more time. You want to read 17 again? Uh, we in 18 right now. Okay. It is good that thou shouldest take, excuse me. It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. Yea, also, from, the, from this withdraw not thy hand. Hold on. Did we finish 17? No. Go ahead. Do Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Why shouldest thou die before thy time? So he's telling you there's a certain level of wickedness w which will cause you to lose your life before your time. Running them streets and doing certain things. Over the top, he says you'll lose your life before your time doing certain things. But watch this, uh, verse 18. It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. Uh-huh. Yea, also from this withdraw not thy hand. He said, take hold of this, this wisdom right here, and from this don't withdraw your hands. Remember that it's balance. Because people be in balance. You get in this truth. Now we got find that balance. Go ahead. For he that feareth the most high shall come forth of them all. So when you tick tocking and you doing all of that, make sure you make sure you find your balance. And make sure you stay vigilant. It's not that you can't have fun. Some folks will tell you, you can't watch no basketball. You can't do this. You can't watch. That's sin. You ever run into Israelites like that? Sometimes you just don't know no better. You, you first start and you zeal, you, you know, you zealous. You don't know no better. But once you done got some time in this truth and you mature, you got to know what these scriptures are saying. It says it's a balance. It ain't a sin. A lot of things are not a sin, but when you overindulge and you get consumed by it, then that's when it becomes a problem. You make things your God. Go ahead. Finish that off. Wisdom. You want, you want I don't need 19. Go to, um, we got a couple of minutes left. I want to show you something real quick. Um, Ecclesiasticus chapter 33. Ecclesiastes 33, and let's get 25. Yep. Sirach 33, verse 25. Go ahead. If thou set thy servant to labor, thou shalt find rest. Uh-huh. But if thou let him go, excuse me, but if thou let him go idle, he shall seek liberty. See, that's the thing that you got to understand. We're servants. You got too much idle time. You're going to be looking to go somewhere else. You can't be too idle in this walk. You got to find something that you can do. You got to put your hands to the plow. Read. A yoke and a collar do bow the neck. Uh -huh. So are torturers and torment for an evil servant. Go ahead. Send him to labor that he be not idle. So he says send your servant to labor. In this case, we're talking about ourselves. Make sure you laboring. Put yourself to some type of work that you be not idle. Why? For idleness teaches much evil. Idleness teacheth much evil. Sometimes people got too much time, social media, and you find yourself in wickedness and evilness. Because you just got too much time on your hands. You ain't doing nothing productive. And before you know it, you done fell into some nonsense. All right? So the Bible says don't do that on your own time. Read some more of that. Go from there. Um, and I got a couple that you can uh, write down real quick. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. They can write that one down. Write down Ezekiel chapter um, 16 and verse 49. 
I think the one in Ecclesi- uh, in Ezekiel was talking about Sodom. That's what happened to Sodom. One of the biggest things with Sodom, they just had abundance of idleness. And with that idleness, they started experimenting. Go ahead. Uh, 16 and 49. And the other one was Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. And then one more, uh, Proverbs chapter 31, uh, 10 and 27, because it even talks about specifically a woman not being idle. If you in that phone all day long, that ain't no good thing. You can be in your phone a little bit and do what you do in the time. Make sure you're putting your hands to the plow. And that's men and women. That's just a specific one for the women. But this is talking about men too. Same thing for y'all. Uh, real quick, get a. We're gonna go through these quick. Proverbs chapter six, and you can give me a Proverbs chapter thirty, twenty four. You six and six. Proverbs six and six. Proverbs chapter six, verse six. Uh huh. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Uh huh. Consider her ways and be wise. So he said, go to the ant, thou sluggard, meaning what? He's talking to a person that's lazy. Don't be a sluggard. Because the ant is not a lazy creature. Go ahead. Which having no guide over her, overseer or ruler. He said the, the ants have no guide, no overseer or ruler. Go ahead. Provided her meat in the summer uh-huh. and gathered her food in the harvest. Taking care of business. The ant takes care of business. It doesn't need anybody to tell them what business they need to take care of. Sometimes we ain't going to get up and do what we got to do unless somebody there to tell us. You got to have the type of mindset that this is what I got to do. It don't matter that ain't nobody here telling me to do it. I got to get up and I got to get it done. Go ahead. How long would thou sleep, O slugger? Uh, how long you going to be sleep? Wake up. Get up. Go ahead. When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? When you going to rise? You, you sleeping too late. You ever heard of that saying, the early bird get the what? Worms. You ain't getting no worms. All the worms is gone. They done beat the sun. They done got up and did their little thing and showed up in the morning. By the time that sun hit that grass, the worms is gone. They back down in that ground. So if you ain't the early bird, you ain't getting straight up. A lot of us, we ain't early bird. We need to be them early birds. We be getting up late. By the time you get up, you rushing half the day. Get up. Go ahead. Yeah. Yet, a little sleep, uh-huh. a little slumber, uh-huh. a little folding of the hands to sleep. Yeah, so, yeah that's all I need. Okay. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, 11. Yeah. So shall poverty come as as one that travaileth, uh-huh. and thy wants as a armed man. So he said, you're going to end up being impoverished. You're going to end up with nothing, struggling, because you don't take care of business. Take care of business, and you'll have the reason why a lot of us don't have is because you don't take care of business. Well, I just need a new job. You don't need a new job. You need to learn how to budget. You don't need a new job. You don't need more on your paycheck. You just need to learn how to do right by the paycheck you get. That's what the Bible is telling us. Real quick, uh, Proverbs 30, 24 through 28. Book of Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 24. Mm-hmm. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. Uh huh. These things are wise. They little, but they wise. Go ahead. The ants. Uh huh. People not strong. Uh huh. Yet they prepare their meat in the summer. They prepare. They prepare. Why prepare in the summer? Why do ants prepare in the summer? Because during the summer is the easiest time to handle your business. It's not raining. You don't have to fight against wind, right? It's crazy because we've adapted that. Kids be out of school in the summertime. It's when you have all your fun. It's time to relax, have fun, right? That's the time where you should be preparing. Bible is saying during the good times, that's the time to prepare for the hard times. You don't prepare for the hard times once you're already in the hard times. Stop being that person that's scrambling to try to get your stuff together because the dude done already hit the fan. Get your stuff together when things are good. 
So when 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 the doo doo do hit the fan and 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 everything going crazy, you already in the comfort of your own home, stocked up and ready. Go ahead. The Coney's are but a feeble folk. Uh huh. Yet make they their houses in the rock. They got enough sense to make sure that they live in places that are fortified. They ain't got to worry. All oh, my my rocks collapsed. I ain't got nowhere to stay. A lot of us, we don't make sure that our shelter or whatever it is that we're thinking is going to protect us, we ain't making sure that it's solid. The Bible tells you in the book of Luke, Luke how to build. Make sure you build on solid ground off top. Straight up. A lot of us, we ain't trying to build on a solid foundation. Read. The locusts have no king, yet though they forth, all of them by band. Yeah, they understand that it's power in numbers. A lot of times, Israel, we forget that. Even in this, we'll be cool with people that ain't trying to keep these laws at all, but we don't want to be cool with other Israelites that's at least trying. Well, y'all don't believe this. Yeah, it's certain cutoffs, but then we still need to understand we need to, to forge some relationships and some alliances. That's what our forefathers were doing. That's common sense. Read. The spider taketh hold with her hand uh -huh. and is in king's palaces. The spider got enough sense. A spider got enough sense to know I need to get somewhere where I'm going to be warm and safe. And I can take my time, put my net up, and every bug that's stupid enough to come in, that's some dinner for me. It's enough bugs running around here. I got plenty to eat. But at least I'm somewhere where I'm going to be good. That spider ain't trying to stay outside. The one, a lot of them got enough common sense. You be wondering, how did the spider get in my house? They going to find a way in. They going to find a way in. And uh, this is going to be the last one I go to. Um, is it hard if I get two more? And I'm done. Prop, one of y'all please give me Proverbs uh, 12. I want verse 24 and then jump to 27. Just them two verses. And then the last one I want is Luke. Can you give me Luke chapter 16? And we'll get 13 through 15. So let, let's get Proverbs first. 12, 24, and 27. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. Uh -huh. The hand of the diligent, excuse me. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. If you ain't diligent, you ain't ruling nothing. You're gonna always be subservient. That's why he says as a nation, that's why a lot of people don't understand this. You find out you're an Israelite, now all of a sudden you just want to parlay. He said that's not what knowing you're an Israelite is about. He said now that you know that you're an Israelite, it's time to build it. It's time to build. You got to put your hand to the plow. It's time to work. He said the harvest is plenteous, but the what? The laborers are few. Pray that he bring more laborers in. It's time to work. Once you find out you're an Israelite, it is time to work. We're supposed to be diligent. Let's stay on it. We ain't got time to be wasting a whole day on some nonsense. Go ahead. But the slothful shall be under tribute. Tribute, you got to pay somebody. The slothful, you're going to continuously be paying high bills, paying too much for stuff that you can do for yourself. Quit being slothful. Quit getting up with just enough time to go and clock in. Punch a clock. Do what somebody else tell you and you comfortable with doing that. Go, go get your own. Go start your own. That's what the Bible is telling us. I know a lot of y'all like, oh, well, yeah, no, go get it. Get up. Get it. You got to get out. Get out. Wait, what? Get, what? get up. Get out and get something. There you go. 27. The slothful man roasted, not that which he took in honey. So the lazy man, he going to go and hunt. He going to get the kill. And then he going to be just so happy that he killed something. And then he ain't going to take care of it. I'll get it later on. For he know it is stinking. It ain't no good no more. A lot of times we get them crops from the garden. You be to let it sit. By the time you get to it, it ain't no good no more. How many of y'all guilty of that? Keep it one on it. Soon as you get that thing, let's let's prepare. Let's if you ain't gonna cook it right now, clean freeze it up it. and put it up and freeze it. Go ahead. But the substance of a diligent man is precious. The substance of a diligent man is precious. That social media can be something that we can utilize, and that some some people are utilizing. 
for a good thing. It's a tool. If you're going to be on that social media, market the heck out of what you believe in and what you help and build. Build this business and build your businesses that's going to ultimately help to continue to build us, our community. That's how you need to start using social media. So I'm not here to tell you to get off of social media. I'm here to tell you limit your entertainment and actually use it for a tool and start making this thing do what it do for you. That's what we should be doing. Was that all of that? And the last one, Luke. Book of Luke, chapter 16. Verse 13. Uh huh. No servant can serve two masters. Hold on. No servant can serve two masters. Whole lot of folks trying to serve two masters. Read. Read he will hate the one and love the other. You're going to hate the one and then you're going to love the other. Go ahead. Or else he will hold to the one uh -huh. and despise the other. You're going to hold to the one and then you're going to despise the other. One of them you giving more of your time and your energy to, and the other one is being neglected. Read. You cannot serve God and mammon. So what is mammon? Because a lot of y'all done read that scripture, and you don't know what mammon is. What is mammon? Huh? Who? Now, that's manna. I, I thought, too, when I first heard it. Mammon. Money. You want, you, but that's not just money. More specifically, but you're on the right track. So when you actually look up mammon, it's extreme or excessive pursuit of wealth or material gain. You can't serve the most high and then be all about the bag, as they say. Yeah, go get that money. Be successful. But he says, don't be excessive and extreme with it. Because when you do that, you ain't going to be able to serve the most high. That becomes your God. That becomes what you give the most of your energy to. He said there's a way to give some of your energy to making sure you sustain yourself and are able to give to your nation. But don't let it be an imbalance. And it's easy to fall in that to the point where you're like, man, I got to get this back. I gotta do it. Look. Don't be imbalanced. Make sure you put the most high first because you can't do both. Go ahead. The Pharisees also who were covetous uh -huh. heard all these things, and they derided him. So they was mad because they was covetous, meaning they was all about the money. They was all about the money. They sit up here and talk about, yeah, yeah, but they was all about getting it. Pharisees was getting money, pulling up. They would have been the equivalent of, you know, Jake's pulling up in fancy car. Yeah, pulling up in fancy vehicles and three-piece suited out and chains and Gators and all of that. Pharisees was extra out. Extra out. But go ahead and read. He said unto them, You are they which justify yourselves before men. And then they would justify themselves. Yahweh Shai called them out. You justify yourself before men. Oh, we supposed to have these things. He was like, But you ain't got to flaunt them. You already got enough and you still trying to get. You know, we're in an age now, we got some of our people becoming billionaires. Them becoming billionaires, what has it done for our community? You spend all of this life for the Jay-Z's, the Kanye's, and all of them. You spend all of this time, Oprah, Tyler Perry, you spend all of this time becoming a billionaire, and what has it done for us? You could have spent half of that time and made half of that money and still been well off. But it don't mean nothing if you ain't got no charity. You ain't doing nothing for the community. Go ahead and read. God knoweth your heart. He know your heart. He know what's in your mind. Read. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. And what's highly esteemed amongst men today, especially when you're listening to all of this rap, what's highly esteemed? Super wealth. It ain't just about being having a little bit of wealth and being able to do some things. Cass is trying to be Jay-Z. And, 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 and he said, you can't do that and serve me. You can get the bag, but you better know. Do what Solomon said. Solomon said, give me food that's convenient for me. He said, don't make me too rich or else I'll forget you. I might forget you, he said. He said, and don't make me too poor or else I'll have to rob and steal. He said, just get, put me somewhere in between. And Solomon was real rich. But you ain't never heard about Solomon chasing no bag. All our forefathers that like the, the patriarchs, they was rich. 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they was rich. But what, what none of them having to try to hustle and do all the extras, it, the Most High blessed them with that. Most High said, yeah, go handle your business. He tell you as a woman, he said, yeah, Proverbs 31, go get it. But he says, make sure that you don't ever put that before me. We got to make sure we focus on building. Man, all praise be to the Most High. Any announcements?